Good evening, guys. Uh, <coughs> right, I haven't been on live for a while, so thought we'd uh, pop up and say hi. Hope everybody's fine. What we've got here is your recognizer Xbox One power supply. And this one is coming on with orange and it's not uh, reverting to the 12 volt, it's not the actual Xbox, it's the power supply. And through past experience with these, it normally means the 5 volt rail is missing or very low. And this uh, is normally down to the uh, secondary capacitors being poor, um, basically low in capacitance. So I thought I'd show you, uh, for those that don't know, what we do and how we change them. So the first thing off is to make sure to get the thing apart. Um, don't forget, bear in mind, if these have been plugged in, there's a good chance the main capacitors will be charged up. Right, well the first thing we need to do is to get these horrible little things out the bottom. And I found the easiest way with these is to make sure I'm in the fuel. I'll just come a little bit closer so you can see. Let's have a look what we got here. There we go. I'm using just the, the hex um, torque driver. And if you go down through the center of the, the foot and then just gently pop it back, it will come out like so. Oops, I didn't move part. But if you try and peel them off, the chances are the actual foot will split and of course you'll end up with the flat bit and the other bit still stuck inside. If you're lucky, you can actually just go straight into the screw and unscrew it, but not every time. So I'll have these four out. Well, I've had about four of these in the last couple of days and I didn't think about making a video. Right, okay, the screws are out. Uh, rubber the figure out rather. Let's have the uh, screws out. Let's have the right size torque, it might help. I'm looking at the dust in this one, looks like it could do with a good cleaner. The main reason these do, all the caps do go on these, apart from old age, is the these do block up very easy the uh, the fan and the vents, and so the caps tend to run rather warm. And the electrolyte inside dries out, and then they start becoming leaky. Um, they just start to lose their capacitance, and then they don't do what they're supposed to do. Right, as I say, if it's been powered on, that cap here will possibly still have quite a high charge on it. These are the caps that need replacing here. Um, but they, they don't particularly hold much of a charge. These are 5 volts, so they won't particularly cause any harm. But uh, this beastie will. So what we're going to do, we're just going to check to see if it's uh, got any charge. Oh, I've just noticed the meter's not on the screen. Uh, where are we? There we go. Uh, so what we'll do, we're just going to make sure there isn't any charge in the cap. Or if there is, we'll discharge it. Now let's see what we've got. Now it's, it's actually nothing there. These aren't too bad. The, uh, they do have a bleed resistor on these, so they will leak away in time. But if not, and you use something like this. And what this is, is a basically a, a resistor, um, 10k, 2 watt. And what we do, we just go across the cap of the probes. And if it's charged up, it will discharge it, uh, I don't know, probably about two or three seconds if it's fully charged to about 340 odd volts something like that right well we know that's not charged so that's not going to do us any harm right okay so we'll have that out and we'll have the whole lot out and we're going to remove this bottom plate 
Now we know the cap's discharged, so we know we're quite safe. Been fairly warm iron for this because there's a lot of soak away on the uh, on the metal here. Um, I will whip the solder off rather than just heat it up, otherwise it ends up in a mess. I've only got one more of these to repair, so I thought I'd better get it on. I haven't streamed live for ages, so I thought I'd better make <laughs> make an appearance. Okay, that's one end. You can see the muckets coming out of this thing. Okay, there's the other. Now we've got it apart, we'll just get rid of the excess solder. Should put my extractor on really. That one's prep. Alright, uh, okay. Let's go out of the way. Well, let's have a quick look at this. Let's see what much we've got in here. I'll come back to that in a second. few comments and questions from a few videos back uh, about power supplies um, I'll see if I can answer some of your questions one of them was why is it a 450 volt cap if it's not 450 volts on the supply and well the answer to that is there isn't 450 volt there's 330 odd 340 the reason why they use 450 is a safety margin because the, um, the DC or the AC can spike and can cause spikes to appear across the cap, um, which if it was only 350 volt, it'd be on such a tight margin that it would probably damage the cap. And the second question is, is why does it become 350 volt from 250? Well, as you know, the AC comes in and it goes through a bridge rectifier. And this virtually uh, changes it into a peak voltage. So if you take 240 volts and times it um, by the, the root value, I think it's 1.414. Uh, probably totally incorrect. So let's try 240. Yeah, 339. So times it by 1.414. Uh, which give you the root, uh, the peak value, um, or you can divide it by 0.707. That's why it goes up that high because the when you turn it to DC, it is a peak value. It's also DC as well because basically AC is a sine wave, as you know. Um, I'll draw you a picture in a minute. Let's get this done. And the when you rectify it, it becomes nearer a flat line. So basically, you, you end up with a the peak voltage, even though it's DC, and it tends to be a lot higher. It's the actual peak value as opposed to the RMS value. All right, let's have this baby out. Oh my word, that is filthy. I think I'll start to take that out and give that a good blow out with the blower. I'll do that in a minute. My word. That's why they uh, end up not working. <laughs> right, let's stick that out the way for a sec. Uh, let's have a look at this thing. Right. Now we'll have these caps out and we'll change that. I'm just changing all the whole set for and it's not worth messing about. Uh, I don't need to use a microscope, but I do use the head scope, so I like to see because my eyesight's not the best as it could be. 
And well, <sighs> I'm a bit of wick. It's actually a very ni remarkably good wick. Um, probably one of the best I've ever used, other than the final one which I use. I should say. This is super wick. As I say, this is by MG Chemicals. Uh, I think this is a two, two and a half mil by ten foot. Quite a reasonable price. The other one I use, which is absolutely amazing stuff, but it's a bit of a job to find, is this one. It's made by Service Soul. Um, and I'm not kidding you, this is like the hind leg of a donkey. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, same as this one. There we go, there's another one. Service Soul. I think I managed to get this from Farnells, I believe. But uh, last time I looked in, they, they said they hadn't got it in stock and they didn't know whether they'd be getting it or could get it back. Well, there you go. Right, anyway, let's have a look at these caps. Uh, just make a mental note of the negative polarities all facing up towards the FET on them three. And this one is away. I think the board's marked, but it's good to make a, a note of where everything is. Uh, So say if you whip these around they normally just virtually fall off or fall out the board. I'm not putting any flux on at the minute because it doesn't really need it with this wick. It's um pretty well doped anyway. Oh, that's one of them, there's the other one down here. As I say, what this these caps do, these are on the secondary of the um the uh, switchbow supply and these are actually the uh, smoothing caps oh, cramp for the 5 volt now if these go or go uh, failure if they fail um, so in other words they start to lose a oh, the other one's gone off oh, stupid thing switch yourself off if they start to lose the capacitance then they they don't work as they should do. Now, you remember I was saying about uh, the um, peak value. Well, without these caps, the supply that's rectified from the uh, the transformer, it comes through a, a little rectifier to change it to a DC, the five volt. Um, without the caps, it doesn't actually. It ends up at silly value of like about two volts. And of course it's not enough for it to actually uh, set up the uh, feedback voltage from the uh, the one. It sends out 5 volt, I think it's on pin 9, and you need to get 3 volt back on pin 10 before this will wake up. Uh, I'll show you in a minute anyway. Let's, let me just get this out. So this one's been a bit more of a pain. So it's a big old ground plane on that bit. And the other one's over there. Right, so if that's bottom loose. Yeah, that one's loose. That one's not. That one's loose. That one, it's not. Uh, you can see how loose that one is. It's fell out. Yeah, that one's out. That one, it's still being held in on the ground plane, on the earth side of it. So let's get a bit more heat. It doesn't help the fact they use a glue on these. I don't know if you can see in there, the black uh, here. It's like um, underneath, they, that's the, that shows you the negative side. On this one, you can see where they put some glue around the bottom of the transformer. It's actually this grey stuff here. You can see that. It's dribbled around and stuck on the cap, which makes it a bit more difficult to get out. 
Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is put a bit more solder on to get the solder off. And that sounds ridiculous, but it does help to melt this leady, unleady crap, even with a wick. Yeah, okay, I think that's all that. Right, I'm not separated from this bloody glue. Oh, there we go. That's out. Right, well, we've got those three out. We'll change those three before I pull the other one out. These, I think, are all 2200 mic, are they? Mm -mm -mm. 2216 volt. Yeah, I tend to put. Um, Slightly high voltage in. Um, basically, it's what's available. It, as long as the voltage rating is slightly higher, it's not a problem. It's if it's too, if it's lower, then you're going to have a problem. So these are tw 22. They are actually at 16 volts. So that's for 1500. That's the other one. So they are the 2200s. These are a little, a little bit fatter than the ones that are in it, but from what I can remember, I'm sure these fit. I hope they do because I've run out of all the others. These are exactly the same electro electrically, just physically. These are slightly shorter, as you can see, but a little bit fatter. But it shouldn't make a lot of difference. So. No, what does matter is you put them in correct, correctly. Most electrolytics, the longer pin is the positive, but you, you'll find there's normally a mark uh, which shows the negative down there. So what I'm going to do is pop them all in before I solder any, just to make sure these will go in. The horrible feeling is going to be a bit of a squeeze. I may have to see if I can find some of the smaller ones. I might have some some down in the other workshop, but I think these will fit fine. No, so far, so good. It doesn't look like the other cap's actually gone. It uh, it looks like it's just these three. A little bit tight, but I think we're okay there. Right, so we will solder these in. The solder here has actually got flux in it, so I shan't pour a load of flux all over the board. Um, don't like getting too much flux on the bottoms of power supplies. It causes dust and muck to stick to it. On the surface mount components, it's fair comment, but on these things, uh, it doesn't really need it. Not if you've got flux in the actual solder. After many years of soldering, you learn to breathe out all the time while you're soldering, blow the flux in the way. Right, okay, well those, those three are soldered, all looking nice. Uh, right, we'll trim them up. I'll check the other cap, if it has gone low, we'll have it out and change it. So this is only a very short vid. I've also got uh, another slow um, blue light of dev on a PS4 um, which I'm going to have to get the uh, UR on so I shall I might do it later um, so I've just done one where it turned out in fact I've had a couple lately one turned out to be as I say the um, what do you call it the uh, USB bridge chip um, not the chip but the supply to the chip failed Another one which turned out to be um, a cracked ball on, I think it was memory zero and one. 
不错，就是说，这个也也也是有好，但是就差不多，就不是讲那么。Not in every case, there's some cases where I think, uh, what was it come up on the other week? I think it come up to something like bias, something, and as yet we haven't exactly worked out what the cause of that one is. But the guys at BWE are doing the, the work on it. Power supplies, as I say, they can be quite nasty at times. Uh, they will bite you. And as I say, it, uh, main voltage is never good to be working on. Uh, I mean, so I'm not saying you shouldn't, but uh, unless you're experienced with it, it uh, it's never a good idea. I don't want to let that twist too much and break the leaves off. Now, I think we're all pretty okay. I'll just plug the fan in. Ah, sometimes the fan is there. Sometimes you don't want to switch on if the fan's not plugged in. Okay, I'll do like so. As I say, this is not something I'm telling you you should do at home. Um, really, this is if you do, you do at your own risk. I can't, you know, I can't say any more than that, really. Okay, now, we'll get some power on. Make sure I don't stick my fingers anywhere I shouldn't. And what I've got here, this thing, I'm going to plug that in. So, right, we've now got a green LED on, so it's telling me that the 5 volt is present now. And if I hold the button in, there we go, we've got 12 volt and the fan starts. And it should stay on while I hold the button. If I let go of the button, it should stay on for approximately 5 to 6 seconds or that. So if I let go of it now, It should go off. There we go. And the fan stops. Um, this is a little, little circuit. And Bill, what I've done, I cheated a little bit. I took the socket off the board, off a, a defunct one, uh, sorry, Xbox One. Took the, the socket off and then realised I hadn't got anything with the same pattern on to mount the socket on. So I just basically hooked, chopped the corner out of the board uh, after taking all the components off, put the so uh, socket back in and um, just added a few components what it needed to actually uh, simulate it being running from a, you know an xbox which is basically like i said the pin 9 is the 5 volt which you see the led i don't know if you can see that or not yeah just about you see the 5 volt leds on here um and then pin 10 is where the return voltage goes from the xbox so if all was good You'll get 3.3 volt come back from the Xbox to say, yeah, I'm here when you start the 12 volt. Um, now, the thing is, the 5 volt comes out here, needs to be dropped to 3.3 volt. And the, this is why I've used an LED. What I've done is put the LED, the live hot end, if you like, the LED, to the 5 volt. Then you've got a 470 ohm resistor in series with the, the negative side of the LED to ground. And the volts drop across the LED is approximately two volts. So that leaves me roughly three volts on the in the junction between the LED and the resistor to earth. Um, um, then basically what I've done is tap that across to the three volt. And I've used an LED here and, and a resistor. So when it comes on, it charges this capacitor here. And that basically, the charge in there will say charged up for whatever time your value of the capacitor is set to and that's what holds the lamp on I set it for about five seconds um, so if I bip it once it charges the cap up holds the three volt there for about five six seconds I think somewhere like and then off it goes if you wanted to leave it on longer you could use a slightly larger electrolytic um, or just hold the button so that is actually working all good so what we're going to do now is we'll disconnect that for a sec we'll pull the power off make sure i don't touch nothing 
Um, now we'll check to see if the caps are still stored. Now these are say they will store but they don't store for very long on this particular model. They've got 300 volts there if you see. Uh, 300 and it's going down 305 4. What I'll do, I will discharge that with the probe, which is basically a 10k resistor across the two probes. So I'll go across the cap of this. There'll be no bangs and you won't damage the cap. Uh, like I've seen people put screwdrivers across them, which is absolutely stupid. Not only can you damage your, your screwdrivers, but you damage the cap as well. Once you've managed to cut the bites off these things, you soon respect them. I'm just going to nip out and blow the fan out, and I'll be back in a second. There's that bit. Oh, that's okay. It's just these bits on me. Yeah. I'll be back in a minute, guys. Okay. I think that'll do. Okay, where are we? I'll put the other on. Oh. Well, it's been one of those weeks with Xboxes again. Right, have we got that in the way? I tell you, the first one of these I had, it all fell to bits on me. That took me absolutely ages to work out how this thing went together. Especially that little bit of plastic that falls out, this thing. Right, I suppose really I'm about to put the metal cover back on, aren't I? Yeah, don't forget when you put these covers on to make sure that the insulation shield is uh, not damaged so that nothing can short out on the bottom. And uh, when you solder it, make sure that uh, you get the solder run around the pin reasonably well and just check that it does run through the board, but not done with too much soldering as it, uh, it can run through the board and short out, but uh, I don't need to tell you that, you know that anyway. Right, okay. Oh, there we go. Now, let's get this thing back together. Right, I don't think I've ever worked so quick. <laughs> yeah, as I say, this is just really a quick video to show you how to change the three caps that normally cause the the orange uh, LED on the front of the power supply just to stay on, even when you uh, plug it into your Xbox. Sometimes all four go, in this case it was only the three. So we'll get this back together and then we'll uh, plug it in and just check it out. Oh, that's better. That was a bit of a rush. All looks good. Alright, there we go. This little power unit, as I said, this little test is a unit to, I knocked up earlier on. Um, all it is, is uh, it ended up being a corner off the Xbox, which I stripped all the components off. And just put a couple of caps, a couple of LEDs and a uh, tactile button on. Um, when you plug it in, if the 5 volts present, you'll see the, uh, uh, let's just move this across a bit, there we go, the uh, green LED. And uh, also using that to drop the 5 volt down to 3, um, there's a resistor, a 470 ohm, from the diode to ground. The diode goes to pin 9 on the socket, 
uh, that's 5 volt and then across on pin 10 is another LED connected the same way to ground um, and at the junction of the green LED and the resistor you've got 3 volts so what I've done is put a tactile switch to there uh, which goes across to the board which is um, there's a capacitor there which is on the end of that red, red LED to ground and I think it's a 10 mic something like that it's nothing massive and all I use that for is to charge up so when I push the uh, the trigger it holds the 3.3 uh, up for the length of time governed by the value of the capacitor so you can push it once and the LED, uh, the lamp or the 12 volt will come up as you can see um, come on move across you and then when you let go of the button, there we go, once you let go of the actual button then it will stay on until the capacitor is discharged and that's all it is really um, I try and publish some on it at some time or other and um, I'll stick a circuit up Okay, well that one. Thanks a lot everybody and see you again soon.